name is Eric and I'm a historical museum educator here at the National Mississippi River Museum here in Dubuque, Iowa. And today we're in Dubuque's Ice Harbor and aboard the William M. Black, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers dredge boat that worked on the Missouri River from 1935 to 1973. This boat was built by the Marietta Manufacturing Company of uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and was built uh, in 210 days for $628,000 in 1934. Afterward, it works its way down to the Ohio River and into the Mississippi River and uh, on to St. Louis. And from there, along with its sister dredges, the Lewis, the Clark, and the Mitchell, work from the St. Louis, uh, Missouri, over the Kansas City, Missouri area, and uh, helping create the first main navigational channel up to the 1950s. And then those four boats helped maintain that channel up to the 1970s. So the boat itself is uh, a dual paddle steam powered suction dredge boat. It is 277 foot long, 85 foot wide, and 1,700 ton or 3.4 million pounds. Side engines are 600 horsepower uh, steam engines and they are attached to two 32 ton white oak paddle wheels and the boat had a running speed of approximately 10 miles an hour. Also in the engine room, we will find a uh, 1,300 horsepower triple expansion engine, and that ran the winch and anchor system and the dredge head, which did all the work in the dredging process out on the bow or the front end of the boat. Uh, this uh, dredge head could be lowered uh, 18 to 20 feet if need be down to the bottom of the riverbed. And then along the uh, top edge, you will find 38 high pressured water jets that shoot out at 300 PSI. From there, all that material that's on the bottom of the riverbed will be suctioned and filtered through two side pipes. And uh, they continue on into the engine room where they combine into one 34 inch discharge pipe. And that pipe extends all, all the way through the boat, past the boat, and laid on a series of flat pontoons called a pipeline stringer that could be up to 700 feet long. And then from there, there was a system that threw all that material on shore. Behind the engine room, we'll find the boiler room. Uh, this boiler room produced up to 45,000 pounds of steam an hour. Uh, the boat was run by oil. And there are four oil bunkers below that boiler room, which was state of the art at the time. And those oil bunkers could hold 47,000 gallons of black bunker sea oil and the oil was brought to the ship by oil barges versus them going to port. Um, behind the boiler room, we have the machine shop. Um, there, every, anything and everything was either replaced or repaired um, with tools such as lays or drill presses. A lot of the crew were fishermen, and so on Friday nights they would convert the um, uh, forge into a grill, and they had Friday night fish fries. So on the second deck, we'll find the living quarters for the uh, crew. Uh, the boat could accommodate up to 60 crew officers or visiting um, dignitaries. And in the back uh, of the uh, living quarters, we'll find a, a main crew cabin of 32. In the bow of the boat, we'll find uh, 12 staterooms for officers. In the middle of the living quarters, uh, deck will find the uh, main dining area for the main crew and also the officer's mess and the main galley. Um, the cooks during the dredging process, uh, which could last up to 24-7, um, they were uh, tasked with making uh, four meals a day, uh, 7 a.m., uh, noon, 5 p.m., and midnight. And then on the third deck, finally, we'll find the pilot house. This is where the captain or chief engineer or senior officers uh, would signal um, the crew for diff doing different tasks. And this included uh, a bell, a steam whistle, um, or uh, running lights, outside running lights. In addition, they ran the four rudders from up top. And also there was a chain driven uh, telegraph that ran down into the engine room. And so they were uh, gave directions for uh, 
for running the boat. So dredging is, is basically the sediment that builds up on the bottom of the riverbed, whether it be sand or silt or, um, or gravel. And so we did basically dredge or dig that out. And, uh, and that process is done through uh, the uh, dredge boats. Uh, back in that day, in the time of the William and Black, at which was, it was a uh, suction dredge. Uh, today, we have a different type of dredging. Uh, in addition to the uh, suction dredge, which we still use today, we also have a process where there are cutter heads on the top of a boat, and then that breaks up the, uh, the material and then that is scooped out and put on barges, and then that is moved to different locations from a location that has too much material to a location that perhaps needs material on the river. The dredging on the major rivers of the United States began uh, approximately in 1930 as commercial barge traffic started taking off here in the United States. And in that year, uh, U.S. Congress established legislation uh, that, um, began the um, establishment of the nine-foot navigational channel. So uh, today, um, that standard continues, and we uh, maintain that channel at nine feet. Uh, the reason we dredge is to um, keep the barge traffic on larger river boats uh, going up and down the river today so they don't get stuck on sandbars. And um, the uh, reason uh, that, that causes that dredging is from erosion uh, during high flooding or also low water. Uh, so the boat was uh, decommissioned in 1978 and it was offered to uh, museums nationally in 1979 and awarded to uh, our museum and the city of Dubuque in 1979. Uh, later that year it was um, towed here inoperable as the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers took um, about 25 to 30 uh, percent that they needed. Um, it was interesting when it got to Clinton, Iowa, um, because of our um, floodgates here, which are 75 foot wide and the boat being 85 foot wide, they stopped in Clinton, Iowa, and they took out the um, wheelhouse on the starboard side and also the paddle wheel, the 32-ton paddle wheel. They put those on deck barges. Um, then they uh, continued towing it up to here to Dubuque and they got it through the, um, the floodgates. And then they spent the, approximately the next year uh, welding that to back together again. Originally, they took off 13 and a half feet of the starboard side and then in uh, 1980, it opened here at the museum, and it's been here uh, 42 years. We want to thank you for visiting the William and Black today, and we hope you uh, to see you on your next visit here at the museum and the William and Black.